Welcome back, everybody, to more EU4. Playing as Italy, formerly Bologna, or Bologna. Uh, with me, Daniel. If you are watching it the day that the video came out, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever equivalent time you're having. Maybe you're just having a relaxing time with your family. Either way, hopefully you're having a great time. If you're not watching it on the day this video came out, good to have you anyway. Um, now, we are in a new recording session. And a pretty interesting, by which I mean terrifying, situation. So here is the state that we're in, just to do a quick recap. We load up our coalition map. Everything in red is in a coalition against us right now. Pretty terrifying. The other major issue is that Austria will be joining the coalition in 1637, when our truce timer finally does run out. Now, the one thing that I was thinking about before this episode started, we go into our Diplo mode. Everybody in blue here is allied to us. We are at seven out of four relations, so we're taking quite a big Diplo penalty in terms of our uh, accumulation of monarch points anyway. So every month we're minus three. We're still gaining eight every month because we have a fantastic um, representative in the form of uh, Giovanni Doria de Surie. I don't know. Anyway, he's a plus four diplomat. Fantastic. Um, not the best he can be. There are better advisors that you can upgrade to. But realistically, very, very good. However, our allies, if we got coalitioned and declared war on by Spain, Ottomans, and Austria, we're going to have a bad time. So, again, just before the episode started, I thought I'd take a look and see who would be willing to ally with us. Not that I intend to straight away, because we're already three, you know, three friendships over. I don't really want to ally with Russia. But they have 207,000 troops. They have more troops than we do. And a heck of a lot more manpower. The other option would be allying the Timurids. Uh, but the Timurids are a little bit behind on tech. And they only have 97,000 troops. They're still pretty big. But they're, they're really nowhere near as big as Russia. And realistically, Russia is probably going to attack them. If we look at the land that Russia covets... Several pieces of it belong to the Timurids right now, and vice versa, in fact. The Timurids cover a ton of land. Not a huge surprise, given they have a militarist leader, but again, what are you going to do? So we're going to have to think about the possibility of allying with Russia. Not sure if we will or not, but it's something we definitely have to think about. So let's continue the game for now. We have a few years to think about it. We're just going to continue on speed three. Great Britain's finally out of a war with more of the native population. So while we're kind of pondering, let's work out what's where. So we have four heavy ships there. Also notice we don't have sound on for the game, so that would probably help if we turn that on now, wouldn't it? <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, yeah, we have four heavy ships are actually accumulating. We now have five. We must have got them set up for building last episode. Here's our main stack. Uh, right now they're just hunting pirates, so that's fine. And then we have two trade fleets, some of which are out in the uh, Black Sea over here. And we have a bigger stack dealing with the Alexander trade node. So we have quite a few ships, but if we get, yeah, if we get a coalition of firing on us, we're going to be hiding them awfully quickly. So again, we have to keep our thoughts on with that too. Are we over our limit? Uh, we are not, so let's build up to it with 10 more light ships going to Constantinople's trade node. Okay, so in terms of other pieces on the table, that 30k stack is made out of mercenaries, so we can't have them do their uh, drilling, because they just won't do it. Is there anybody near us who is not in the coalition? I doubt it, but let's check. Well, Auvergne technically isn't, but we don't have a claim on anything they have, and it's not really where we want to expand right now. 
Uh, we still have a truce with Morocco, so that's not on the table. If we attack Tunis, that'll trigger the coalition, because they are in the coalition. Our options are pretty limited. Auvergne is quite legitimately the only neighbor we have that is not in the coalition against us or in a peace treaty with us. So we're going to have to sit on our hands. So let's get the speed three back on. Apparently all our royal marriages are going to end because everybody's going to die at once. And what we're going to do is wait until the next calendar year. There's a load of fort improvements to bastions, just in case we do get attacked. We're still getting our spies in the Ottoman territory and in Spain. Former got caught, so you can see the number in red there going down. But yes, we have to sit on our hands for the moment and plan what we're going to do next. Is Scilly in the coalition? Yes, no, they're still in a peace treaty. Their peace treaty is actually longer than Austria's, is, which is strange. Very, very strange. Other thing I guess we should check is what our governing capacity is. We still have roughly 200 more governing capacity. If we start getting close again, we're just going to start building some specialty buildings to help us with that. We have a few options in terms of buildings to help. We could go for courthouses. Um, we could eventually go for town halls, but we're, we're close, but we're not there yet. We also have options of building state houses. Yeah, there's a couple of minus 10s that would be in there. It's possible. Well, it's tempting, but not yet. Yes, we'll definitely take that royal marriage. Thank you very much. Are we still buddy-buddy with our allies? We're only at plus 104 with Poland, but that should be more than adequate. Um, they're upset with us because we're a different religion to them. Um, actually, minus 50 caused by that. That's pretty much as big as that can get. Uh, and we are allied to one of their rivals because they have... Well... They're rivaling both Bohemia and Great Britain. So if we were to ally Russia, we might end up breaking our alliance with Poland. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Bohemia, our ally, doesn't like the Netherlands. The Netherlands doesn't like them back. Also doesn't like Morocco. Nothing in here is too, too dangerous. Like I said, the only thing that could really go wrong is if all of our big neighbors go in on a coalition with us at once. Start of the next year, uh, we'll definitely do that royal marriage, Bohemia. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Austria has sown dissent among our population. Just to show what that does, because I'm not sure if I actually have shown that so far. It puts every province uh, plus two unrest that you own. Most of our provinces aren't going to give a monkeys about that. But I'm not worried about it. We barely have any unrest at all. Let's get tech level 19 across the board. We can unlock cathedrals. There we go. We can unlock the war galleon. It gives us a lot of things. So we get war galleons, frigates. We can build dry docks. We can increase our colonial rage. Not that we really care about that. It does make our ships slightly more expensive to maintain. And now we can unlock Gustavian infantry tech. Practically speaking, it just gives us new infantry to go for. And we can build star forts so we can increase our upgrade on our bastions to make an even more resolute fort. So, our charge infantry can now be Highlanders infantry, Gustavian infantry, or the reformed Tercio. None of these really match where we are. Uh, the Tercio Spanish infantry, Gustavian infantry is Swedish, you know, based on Gustavus Adolphus. And Highlander infantry is, uh, well, from the highlands of Scotland. So all these really fit. They're all worth the same number of points. I'm just going to pick the reformed Tercio. Probably the closest to what, you know, we would actually pick if the AI was pick, picking something appropriate anyway. In terms of the buildings that we just unlocked, I guess we can show them too. So dry dock is just a 100% sailors modifier rather than 50 with the regular dock. Not really that interesting. So we'll just... Not going to build it for a while. And the Star Fort is a fort level plus six instead of plus four. They are a lot more expensive to maintain, though. And they're really expensive to build. So it's 580 to build. Their maintenance is three gold and change. You get a discount if you build an upgrade rather than a brand new. 
uh, star fort, so you can notice, say, for example, in Treviso, already has a bastion, so it's only 193 gold in the difference. While we have some money, that's what we're going to do, because, again, if the coalition triggers, we do not want to have to deal with our forts being incredibly quick to capitulate. We're not going to do every single fort. We don't need to. Some of the interior ones really don't matter that much, like this one here in Perugia. Doesn't doesn't matter. It is tempting to put one down in Rome, given that's our capital now. We're probably not going to. What we have a big variety of buildings here. We could upgrade so if you see a building with a green float, you can actually just upgrade the building. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna upgrade the port though so that we now have a world port it gives us more institution spread and a lot more local trade power we should check too because i will be the first to tell you i very frequently forget do we have other provinces we can boost our ports in we do we have a lot so we're going to want to do that it costs 200 gold to do it from a level one to a level two but it is very, very helpful. It also makes development cheaper a lot of the time. So we're going to do it. We have the money spare. We'll get a couple of them upgraded. The ones on the coast, if we can, are preferable. Um, but we can't we can't always upgrade it. Depends what we've got going on. But a few of them we certainly can. That one. We should be able to upgrade this one. And realistically, the reason why we're doing this, it'll help us with our institution spread, but it'll also keep us pretty much at close, you know, pretty much at 100%. We have 98% of the total trade power in the Genoa node and 90 in Venice. And we want to keep it that way. We don't want anybody sniping any money off us. That's why we have big trade fleets in Alexandria and Constantinople. Anyway, we spent a lot of money there, so we'll try to keep our powder a little bit dry now, just in case we have to get any, any mercenaries, just in case. The Ottomans are spying on us and have failed, so that's that's good. Or France still has all its European holdings sieged out. France tends to go either way. Uh, when it comes to EU4, it either starts dominating this entire part of the map and starts carving into the Holy Roman Empire. Or it just breaks into a million pieces, like a glass ornament that you've dropped on the floor. Luckily for us, the latter happened. It's a lot easier to deal with this mess than it is with a full France. They have some ludicrous military ideas, which will make them very difficult to deal with. So we don't have to deal with any of that. Instead, we get to deal with Spain, who tend to be significantly easier. Now, their rebellion stack... Okay. They're Algerian separatists, so the reason why I was so cautious there is... They're drilling... You know, our stack's drilling, so it has no morale. So we could get stat wiped really easily if an enemy army parked on us. This is an Algerian group, though, so they will tend to stick in Algerian culture provinces, of which... Our province adjacent is not, it's Berber. So the odds of it coming over and saying hello to us is incredibly low. So I am not worried, at least not about that. It might just be me, but I am also quite bugged by the fact that the Ottomans are green, we're green, and yes, it's not exactly the same green, but it's too similar for my liking. Doesn't do it for me. Anybody that's played this game, I'm just curious, what colour do you pick? If you pick like a custom nation or you got to choose your colour if you didn't, what colour would you pick? Um, you may even pick a different graphics pack to this. This is just the base pack. There are graphic packs available for free. I thought about showing them off, but I'm worried it'll break things while I'm mid-series. So we'll wait for now. The 13 colonies have just eaten a giant chunk out of the Atahachi Federation. They're probably going to have a whole host of rebel issues, but anyway, that's a them problem, not an us problem. What's our manpower? 159,000. So we're not at full manpower, but we're pretty close. It's not bad. That component's not going to cause us any issues. 
Uh, Geneva isn't in a coalition against us, I've just noticed. So we do have a second nation adjacent to us that isn't... Hmm. Hmm. It would bring Austria in. So I could reset their timer. Hmm. So if I attack Geneva, I, I'm clearly going to have to get a CB against them, so it's not going to happen straight away. Let me bring my diplomat back for that. If I attack Geneva, it would bring in Provence, don't care. Onsbach, don't care. Austria, obviously we do care. You know, 96,000 troops will make you care. But it'll also bring in Saxony, because they're the Holy Roman Emperor right now. And it will bring in all of their allies. Now... They do have a lot of allies, but none of them are very dangerous. I mean, the most dangerous one is Lithuania. 43,000 troops, but they're on the other side of the planet. And if I was to theoretically attack Geneva... Yeah, Poland would come in, even if the ruler is cruel. Hmm, that might be an okay way. That might be a very good way, in fact, of keeping them. But Oh, Gascony will vassal to us. Well, that changes a lot of things for us. Okay, let's get that done first, then. Well, I'm glad I checked. I know the last few episodes, they were just not willing. Get them vassalized immediately. That won't give us another diplomatic relation because we were already allied to them. We haven't had a vassal yet in this game, so we should take a look about what that means practically. Uh, so, when you have a vassal, this screen, subject screen, becomes available. Shows your relationship with them. You can go up to plus 200 improved relations with a vassal as opposed to just 100 for everybody else. It'll show you how much money they're paying you every month. I mean, it's pocket change in the grand scheme of things. What their liberty desire is which is, well, nothing, because they love us and they highly trust us. Plus, their development is pretty low. The bigger the vassal is, the more likely they are to rebel, as we've seen with, you know, colonies in North and South America. Shows you how big their army is, which is absolutely tiny. And then you have this interaction option, so it defaults to no focus. You have some limited control over what your vassal does in a war, and it is very limited it is incredibly limited but you can pick so by default there'll be no focus we're not going to bother having them do anything in particular purely because they're so small it's irrelevant but more importantly are how you can interact with it otherwise if you have a vassal with a religion that is not the same as yours you can just force them to change we're going to force them to embargo our rivals. It does make them slightly more upset with us, but not by a huge amount. We can also get them to divert trade, but we don't need them to do that. The other thing that is sometimes useful is to enable scootage. So scootage forces them to pay you more money. But when you go to war, they don't. They just sit and do their own thing. It's interesting, we're not going to do that, but it is interesting that that's an option. Now, why would I even want Gascony as a vassal? It's this section. So, they have cores on a reasonable amount of southwest France. And when you give a nation a core, or they obtain a core, it costs a lot less in the way of admin points. So it's very efficient, monarch power-wise, for a nation to get a core rather than you getting a claim and having to core it. So we'll probably, if we can, try and get Gascony to maybe eat this area of the map. Then eventually we'll absorb them. You have to pay diplomatic power to do that. But it gives us something else to play with anyway. Now, before we forget... We want to send a spy out to Geneva. How much are we going to acquire every month? 1.47. Yeah, our spy detection in <laughs> Geneva is 
It's so bad that we're going to get a positive against it. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and get into a war with a lot of smaller nations before the coalition decides they want to fire. Oh, proliferation of the musket. So firearms as they grow commonplace. A lot of the old regiments just phase on. We just gained some army professionalism, so we're okay with that. We also have a new national decision to make. Standardized uniforms. You pay a bit more land maintenance to drill faster. We're going to do that because we can afford to do that. We're definitely not doing the active uniformity. I'm just looking at our other, other mission options we have available. We're definitely not doing that. Want manpower? Sure, Bohemia, you can do that. Are you at war with anybody? No, you just don't have any men. What's our fleet looking like in the Black Sea? Up to 44, we're still going to get three more reinforcing. We are still net positive on our sailors. Not by a huge amount, just over 100. We're attritioning quite a lot of them. Oh, that's interesting. So Austria has forced a white peace between France and Carib. Where was that? Crabe, yeah, that, the Crabe, that's what I meant to put. Good old Crabe. Carib down here in South America. Okay. Interesting. France's colony is probably about as big as France. Yeah, things have not gone well for them. Our royal marriage with Elodia has died. Now, do we want to keep these guys as an ally? It's taking a Diplo point off as a month. And now that we've completed the mission, are they really worth keeping? I don't think so. So if they offer us a royal marriage, we're going to say no. Yeah, they only have 3,000 troops. They have no manpower. And there's next to a nation that has 70,000 troops. I'm not going to actively get rid of their alliance yet in case the coalition fires on us. It'll be good just to have them as distraction. But yeah, we're going to say, no, we don't want royal marriage with you right now. They're not going to like it, but they can deal. Oh, interesting. Do they not get a penalty from that? Huh. <laughs> Very strange. You'd think something like that, you'd get a big penalty, but no. Oh, Saxony got re-elected as the Holy Roman Emperor. That's kind of lucky for us. That could have gone downhill really quickly if that had uh, changed to a genuinely dangerous nation. But it didn't. Truces have started to expire with nations that we don't care about. Do we have a province that we can claim? No, we need... Okay, so we need 60 spying power against the Ottomans, and we need 60 against Spain as well. Claim amount goes up the more claims that you have. Oh my word, court painter available for 1,029 ducats. He must be the best painter anybody's ever seen. I can afford it, but it's 1,000 ducats for 50 admin power. Ooh. No, even... I know I have 4,000 gold. That is a rubbish deal. That is terrible. I'd rather save the money and invest in a better... Uh, better advisor, I think. Yeah, that's a lot of cash. Speaking of lots, what are we looking like in terms of maximum force limit? We have seven more capacity. do that we'll increase our strength down in the african coastline that would probably be a good use of money too because we are making so much money getting some more regimental camps could potentially be of great use to us let's get a few of them down it'll increase our force limit just slightly oh for comparison so while i've been playing this game offline I've been playing a couple of different games. Now, one of them I've been playing as Solon, who starts the game kind of here-ish. 
the gear in trade node which they start in has to be a contender for the worst trade node in the game there's just no money here so you can't afford to keep really any type of army up it's so painful oh playing in spain is you know also there's spain italy anywhere on the mediterranean is just so much easier when it comes to finances do you be a spending 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 practices uh do we want to turn a blind eye and gain corruption what's our corruption like is it two it's going down quite a lot we're rooting out corruption but we're ahead so yeah let's let's pretend we don't see it then let's get some uh, extra development out of our provinces we can't claim land until august so we'll do that in a moment we just got our spy court in spain which is mucho unfortunate eh? They are so incredibly happy that the passes are going to stay at 50%, even after we seize land off them. We own 87% of the land, nearly 88%. That's pretty wild. We have rebellions we have to deal with in a moment, too. Where are the rebels planning to spawn? In... It was in Sicily, wasn't it? Yeah. That's quite annoying. So our pirating team, not pirating, or your know, anti-pirating. Once they settle on land, we can travel over there with our mercenary stack. How many transports do we have? Okay, we have the exact right amount. You can't split a mercenary stack, so the fact that we had exactly 30 transports was convenient, to put it mildly. Yeah, there's not a huge chance of revolt here, but just enough to have to deal with it. So uh, we'll put a stack there. We can resume to... Let's... If we blockade enemy ports... <laughs> let's, let's be the troll for a change. Let's see if the AI actually does anything. I'm wondering if we should... Uh, let's upgrade our ships first. It's the war galleon that's being upgraded, so it's definitely worth doing. And we'll give you 600 ducats, Bahini. We want... If our allies are asking for money, we're okay with it. We're making money hand over fist. And although Germany and modern-day Poland, it's a reasonably wealthy area in this game... It's, it's not quite as good as what we've got going on anyway. It is good, just not that good. Again, though, we probably have a contender for the wealthiest area. Arguably, Constantinople is, or Beijing can be too. This can be crazy money. Although, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the fog of war to clear, because this is a mess. Shun is enormous. Korea barely exists and is being attacked. How is why is Russia attacking? Yeah, Russia is attacking Korea right now. So Korea is getting curb stomped. Japan is fully formed and has dribs and drabs in the Asian mainland, but not a huge amount. Uh, apparently, we do have a free Tibet. Oh, kind of. It's a tributary state of Shun. We're not dealing with tributaries because we're not in Asia, but uh, that can be quite fun as a mechanic as well. We're not allowed to deal with that, though. Europe doesn't have tributaries. It has vassals. All right, we should be... Uh, you want a seat in Parliament? Go for it. We should be pretty close. Yeah, we can get a claim on Geneva now. So we will stop drilling. Is this supply limit 14? That one is, so go over there. You need to stop drilling, go over here. You need to stop drilling, go over here. And then you need to stop drilling and go over here too. Clearly, we're not going to attack straight away. Uh, our stack of heavies can join the rest over there. We're clearly not going to attack straight away because we need time purely 
to get our morale up. Having said that, what's the war situation right now? Portugal won't join, that doesn't matter. Everybody else will. Has Saxony's alliance chain, chain, train. Has, ally <laughs> has their alliance chain changed since I last looked? Wow, those were hard words to say, apparently. <laughs> No, nothing has really changed. So if I attack Geneva, it's such a small nation I'm struggling to click on it to potentially declare war. First world, uh, first world problems there. Yeah, we're going to outnumber them massively. I think this is still the right idea. We do have to be really, really cautious in certain regards because... The Ottomans could declare on us and bring in the coalition any time they like. I mean, the one advantage is that if the Ottomans do that, the only ally they have that would probably join in is Morocco. Everybody else is quite a long way away. Spain is allied to... Well, if Portugal would not join in. So we would probably be okay. Yeah, we should probably do this just so we can get Austria on a longer timer again so we will do that we're going to do it next episode because I see our timer is at like 31 minutes or so uh, I'm right on cue too okay so we're going to be declaring war immediately next episode stick around it's going to be fun Ho again hopefully you're enjoying your day and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for some more EU4 have a wonderful rest of your day bye now thank you for watching the video and if you'd like to see more Feel free to stick around.